Okay, we are here in the music hall in Helsinki and we, the Brass at Sibelius Academy is just starting today and we had the lecture about learning. Päivi uh, Arias, uh, you were talking lots, lots of things about learning. What do you think is the most important thing in learning? I think uh, it's very important to understand uh, that the really the aim of practicing is to learn things. And uh, when you can uh, believe on your learning so that when I do certain things I will learn it, then uh, you learn much more than in the case you just uh, think that, okay, I've got to p practice and repeat things for practicing. So really uh, having this focus on learning is very <coughs> essential. So you really need to know what is the difference between practicing and learning? I would say uh, the aim of practicing is to learn things. How to cut the final goal in the minor goals? Um, goal setting is a very effective tool uh, when you uh, plan your practicing. So uh, many musicians say that they knew already at the very early age uh, what they wanted to do and they wanted to become musicians. It was nothing concrete but something uh, very clear to themselves. But uh, these uh, dreams uh, don't carry anywhere just by, you know, if you only dream and don't do anything for it, then uh, <coughs> that's... Uh, it doesn't lead anywhere. So you have to then uh, put some more concrete goals, sub-goals, uh, for example, learning certain repertoires, competitions, exams, these kind of things. And then these uh, short-term goals, like uh, how do I spend my practicing hours today? So very concrete, very short, easy goals. You were also talking about aptitude. What does aptitude to us and uh, how can, uh, what is it actually? Aptitude is a word uh, that we nowadays use more instead of talent. S and uh, it, it, the idea is that um, at earlier days people used to think that they have certain amount of talent and all uh, have developing uh, happens inside these limits. Uh, which are kind of, uh, if somebody has less talent and less possibilities and uh, the other has more. But nowadays, uh, when we talk more about this flexible aptitude, it means that uh, the more effort and energy you invest on your practicing, on your work, then uh, somehow this area gets larger, the aptitude is flexible, then uh, it grows all the time. So the aptitude is something like concentrating in, in certain things? Uh, yes, and because um, we were not born with the skill to play or to do some sports or whatever. We have to practice that. And when we decide that we want to, to learn something, then uh, we have to start putting energy and invest uh, time on that. And then uh, we start learning it. And uh, this uh, idea of uh, flexible aptitude uh, came from an American uh, professor, Carl Dweck, around 10 years ago. And uh, nowadays it's quite a famous uh, theory. And then uh, quality uh, versus quantity. Uh, many musicians or music students uh, think, uh, I, I guess, a little bit too much about quantity and not the quality. Is that right? Uh, especially with younger students, yes, because students uh, talk so much about how much they have to practice. Uh, maybe not brass students that much, but uh, pianists and violinists, uh, they talk about uh, measuring hours and uh, I still have to practice more and more and more. Uh, and, but uh, we know that uh, bad quality practicing doesn't lead uh, to any good results. So of course, uh, these both matter, uh, but uh, good quality is always something that we are aiming at. A bad repetitions go easily to the motor memory, is that right? Yes, it is, and uh, when students <coughs> start understanding uh, the meaning of quality, uh, then uh, it's easy to think uh, that only good quality practicing uh, brings any results, but actually this bad and bad quality practicing is for nothing. But actually also this bad quality practicing, if you m do a certain amount of repetitions, that goes also to the motor memory and you start learning bad habits. And that's why it's very important to keep the quality and remember not to practice in a bad way. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Eria Joukamo Ampuja, uh, you are the Horn professor here in Sibyl's Academy. Uh, you were talking about uh, supercompensation. Yeah. What that uh, word actually means? Well, it's a good word for, for musicians. It means that uh, the body itself can sort of strengthen the muscles which were tired in the first place if you can variate your practicing so that you let the body renew the, the strength and, and then you get more for free. So you have to rest enough uh, for getting uh, the strength. Yeah, you, you lose strength when you play and practice, and then when you start resting, then you get the power back. And if you take it a little bit easier, with a little bit more breaks next day, and, and not so long or not so loud or something, then actually you get more power in your playing just by rhythming, changing the rhythm in your practicing a bit. Yeah. What is your best tip for practicing well? My tip would be more quality and maybe if you're smart, less time. Yeah. So it's, it's not about uh, how many hours, but it's more like how. So that you know enough about brain, you know enough about learning and, and you are open to try different practicing techniques to find the best for you. You were t talking about uh, image practicing as well. Uh, clarify a little bit this. Well, you can use images or pictures or um, stories. stories, visualization and an imagery also so that you you let the body know and feel feel the music when you sing with the instrument and you don't you play afterwards and let the body sort of guide you for the more natural music making and there are many ways you can wake up the imagination and the point is that you focus then more on making music rather than uh, concentrating on the technical things when you perform. Then how about uh, uh, practicing performing not just playing? Is there a difference uh, between these two things? I think you have to realize in practicing that um, first you let the body know it and you memorize it, but then you have to activate the brain so that you would learn how to focus in music, how to keep the focus in music. You have to practice that to be able to do that on stage. It doesn't happen like a miracle just waiting it to happen. So you, you, you have to work for it and uh, then then you can play your story from your heart to the audience's heart and they really feel the difference. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we um, found out during the years with Paivi that there are several teachers all over the world who are uh, at, as interested in teaching, practicing and a little different uh, um, sort of focus on their work. So we put it together and thought that this is maybe one way we can help everyone to get more tips and more thoughts about how they could practice and how they could improve their learning and performing skills. Because I think the music matters. I think we all are passionate about bringing the music forward that way. And this is an easy way to... Um, we made a web page where you can go and learn more and study more. So it's free for everyone and uh, it's like easy to teach something like outside the classroom so we don't really interfere in the normal teaching but then this is something which, which could help teachers and students in the future. So the students could use their time uh, more efficient and get to the real core of learning. Yeah. Use time better and then get new tips. Sometimes you think you know about practicing everything but then when you read these things you find out that oh I didn't I never tried that, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, I hope it's inspiring.